Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Selectman's meeting of October 16th. Roll call, please. All five selectmen present, as well as town council, town administrator is absent this evening. We'll do a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I'd like to, our policeman to lead us in that, please. Thank you. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Announcements. Actually, at this time, I want to go out of order. I don't want to keep people here. They don't have to be. So let's do our presentation. Then. Okay. Patrick, you want to look it up and everybody come up? Do you want me to uh, read this off while? Uh, yes. You, can. you want me to read it on the microphone? Yes. Yeah. All right. Why don't we get everybody up here and uh, we can introduce. Well, uh, Officer White, Officer Gerard, Lieutenant Gerard, and Lieutenant um, Walter Correa. Okay, I heard you went swimming. <laughs> All right, so it says, a Board of Selectmen, Wareham, Massachusetts, award this certificate of appreciation to James White, Wareham Police Officer, in appreciation for your her her heroic response on October 8, 2018, when you jumped into the waters of Buzzers Bay to save the lives of two individuals. Your quick thinking and bravery to save another human being's life is commendable. The Board of Selectmen is thankful and proud of your unselfish act that you are a member of our Wareham Police Department. It's awarded the 16th day of October 2018, and it's signed by the Alan Slavin Chairman, Patrick Tropiano Clerk, Peter W. Teitelbaum, Anthony Scaziati, and Mary Bruce. And uh, I had to read Thank you, guys. You know, that's the kind of stuff you see on TV all the time. And, uh, you know, it, it happens every day. These guys put down their lives and they do their stuff because they're, they're proud to do it, too. It's amazing. Thank you so much, gentlemen, all of you, especially you, Mr. White. All right, next up would be announcements. Tony. All set, thank you. Mary. Mm, all set. Peter. Yes, on Monday uh, the 22nd, we have the fall annual town meeting over in the uh, high school auditorium at 7 p.m. Uh, Madam moderator will lead the proceedings. Uh, get there early. I'm thinking there's going to be a pretty good crowd. Uh, we've got a school, new school expenditure article on the warrant that should draw out a lot of people, and there's some other things of interest, too. So try to be in your seats by 7 o'clock so we can start on time. I, um, uh, there's nothing here. Nothing though? No. Nope. We're expecting most likely to have an overflow crowd so people understand you may have to go into the cafeteria. We'll have someone there as well as be on TV, et cetera. So it is important you get there early to get set up so we get started on time. As everybody knows, we have a zero quorum, so we start at 7 o'clock. We don't have to wait for anybody. Thank you. All right, next up is citizens' comments. Anybody here to speak to us this evening? Come on up, please. Uh, speak right into the microphone, say your name, please. Anyone? Anyone, it doesn't matter. They all work. I hope. Good evening, Lisa Morales. I have uh, just a couple of questions and then a comment to read. Uh, it's regarding the Buzzards Bay Coalition lease of the bathhouse Bleak Beach, the Bluffs, in the park in Onset. Um, my question, first question, is there a lease other than the one that was signed on June 12, 2017? We will not answer any questions. Your questions will go into the book, and we will get back to you. And we'll get you. back to you with answers. Uh, the little book on your left side, if you write it in there, it'd be great. Um, the other question is, are you going to require a demolition permit? I've asked that question of both the building inspector and I copied the town administrator and got no answer. 
as to whether or not a building, a demolition permit will be required for that building. Whatever the d building department decides. We don't make those decisions. We don't make those decisions. Um, who will own the building once it's built? Who will own the building? Mm -hmm. Well, the building belongs to us. Yeah. The building belongs that to building's being d demolished. Who's going to own the new building? The building will be ours. It's the town of Wareham's. Belongs to us, yeah. And have the Buzzards Bay Coalition obtained the required waiver from the state in order to not build it above grade for the FEMA? That's something zone. you're going to have to ask the Buzzards Bay Coalition. They're the ones who applied for it, not the town. Correct. It would be required for the building department here as well, correct? You will have to go to the Buzzards Bay Coalition to get your answer. My other question is, did you know about the demolition of the building at the time of the town meeting vote? I don't understand your question. When you brought it to town meeting, you brought it as a, quote, rejuvenation of the building. At it that time, did you know that the building would be demolished? I don't remember it saying rejuvenation on the thing. It's in the town meeting warrant. Well. It's, it's, I don't know that At that's that even. Time, I don't know if that's relevant anyway. But put the question in the book, and we'll get you an answer. That's the question. Um, the integrity of the town meeting system of government in town is called into question by this board's actions. The board stepped well outside the scope of town meeting's approval by leasing not only the bathhouse, but the 16,889 square feet of beach and coastal bank and a portion of Bayview Park as well. If the public does not speak out about such abuses of power, the entire system of government in Wareham becomes suspect. The dedicated public land, which covers acres of land in onset, never to be leased or sold by the decree of the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts, comes subject to the whim of these five people. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. No. <laughs> no, that's oh, not what I was going to say. Yeah. Don't even bother dealing with it. We'll move on. Board comments? That's it, thank you. No, nope, I'm good. <laughs> no, we don't comment any of this. No, Peter? Yeah. Uh, in thinking about the town meeting and thinking... Oh, hold on. We have another person. Another person. Did you want to speak? Yeah. All right, come on down. Sorry, I didn't see you. I don't think you wanted to see me. No, I, I like to see everybody. It's fine. My name is Donna Ryan. Um, I have a few thoughts and opinions, and I'm a little dismayed at the way your board operates. I come from a small town where I live permanently, but I have, I'm part of a family that's been down here for 100 years, so I have as much ties to Onset as I do to Whitman and the Brockton area. I am used to dealing with a small town board, Board of Selectmen and Whitman, and I have never seen a board that is this condescending to somebody trying to speak about something that is illegal. You uh, don't allow people to speak. I went to the Conservation Commission and wanted to speak then, and nobody would allow anybody to bring up the bathhouse or the dedicated public land or the illegal use of the dedicated public land. You just say, we're not, we're not discussing that, it's not on the agenda, and we're not taking any questions, and if you have a question, write it in the book. I'm totally dismayed That's at the, the amount of people in town that are not aware of what is going on. They think that the only thing that's going to happen is that the bathhouse is going to be repaired, and that's not the case. You know it, and I know it. And I find that totally unacceptable that the town doesn't allow people to know the truth. And the truth is the Buzzards Bay Coalition will end up owning everything, and it will be a private, um, it'll all be private. The beach, the bathhouse slash boathouse slash yacht club, it would be a private endeavor. And yeah, it will, cool. you, you've closed out public from coming into town with the parking permits. You've been s very successful in doing that. You've stopped people from bringing revenue into the town. I see on Facebook that Onset is blighted. You sh you're making faces over there, Mr. Tittlebaum, but that's the truth. People don't come into town because they get ticketed, so you aren't getting any revenue into town. L let me say something. Onset is the subject of a slum and blight study. It's been a s that subject before, but it's more so because there isn't any revenue. That's, that's a federal designation for the type of study we have to perform, so that's what no, my, no, was squenching my face no, up at because right. I didn't know if you were aware of that. I 
aware that there's been studies before, but it didn't look as bad before as it does now because there's nothing that's coming into Onset. There's no chance for anything coming through Onset. There's just no revenue coming through. Well, you know what? I, I can say this. In, in your, 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 your group, your group. I'm not part of a group. I'm a Well, individual. whatever. Okay. You're, you're, you and others that are belong to a group I do not have a certain group. opinion. This is the first Excuse me. I said you and others, okay, others that belong to a group. The I others belong, belong to a group. group. They have an opinion that uh, what's going on with the Bass House is incorrect. We have uh, authority, lots of authority, including state authority and others that say it's not the case. And if you think that it's wrong, then you have options. And you're welcome to, to, to go I and for, take those options if you think it's necessary. May I ask you a question? Yeah. The town of Wareham does not own the bluffs or the bathhouse. We're not going to argue that again. See, you, we, this is where the difference of opinion comes in. We believe we have the grounds, not just us, but a lot of other folks, including council and everybody else, believes that, the, that we're standing on solid footing here. You just happen not to agree. Now, I know they've written letters to the attorney general. The attorney general sends them back. Everything has all been checked a bunch of times. It and we checked. believe, look, I'm not going to argue with you anymore. I'm just telling you what the problem is you believe one thing we believe another and that's fine you're welcome to do that and there are other options for you if you don't like to what we have said or what has been said and I'm not going to say another word but you have other options and you're welcome to exercise those options for that dedicated public land and you've you're welcome to exercise your options now you can write everything else in the book and whatever you need answers for which is what this is for we'll be happy to get you answers Okay. You'll get, I, I know what your answer is. What I'm trying to say is, is that you were the trustees for dedicated public land, and you went behind the backs of everyone in town. Nobody went behind anybody. It was right on town meeting. Well, Everything got, went up. You had a second town All right, meeting. that's enough. It's, she's yeah. been on there three minutes. We're oh, done I with it. My three minutes. Thank you. Oh, Have a nice very day. You're very welcome. You too. Have a nice time. <laughs> Board comments, please. No more. <laughs> No. Okay, can we go to board comments? Board comments. Tony, anything? No. no. Coming up? No. 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 Please be quiet. Mary? Nope. Peter? Yeah, I've got one thing. Uh, this is what I, was, what I was starting into before we uh, listened to the citizens. Um, we've got, you know, again, a very likely well-attended town meeting uh, we've got a lot of people, I think, coming to vote on the school article. I know that the, uh, and I should announce this as well, the uh, Honor Society is setting up a kid watching uh, thing in the gymnasium so the parents can come attend town meeting and have their kids watched over in the gym. The Honor Society is going to play ball with them and have games and this, that, and the other thing with them. But we've got uh, several articles, uh, three in particular that are of fairly significant financial import to the town. Uh, one of them is the $90 million appropriation for the new school. The second is the uh, $1.4 million appropriation being sought for the Tremont Nail Company property to uh, remediate the environmental contamination there. And the third is the overlay district. Uh, which on its face is simply a zoning article, but as everybody knows, we've got a company interested in coming in uh, that would like to sp fairly, uh, spend a lot of money there. Uh, pardon me? Please. This isn't an open meeting where you can yell things out. Excuse me. Next comment, I'm going to ask you to leave the room. Okay? Thank you. Under the town bylaws at, I think it's Article 1, Section 2, uh, the Board of Selectmen, if it so chooses, can uh, vote to exempt articles out of the lottery system and take them up early. And I just think for the convenience of the meeting, uh, to get people in and out of there on the three most important articles that I think would draw people in there, I would like to uh, ask the chairman to put this on our next agenda so we could vote. and. Uh, Make everybody's lives a little bit easier. You're asking for the, the remediation of Tremont Nail is number one? Right. Remediation of Tremont Nail, number one. Number two would be the uh, new school. Number three would be the 
Well, actually, it would be remediation, uh, overlay district, and then new school. You want to also include the other zoning articles? No, because I don't think they're going to draw quite the same level of uh, attention or interest. You don't, I don't want to load it up too much. Okay. We'll discuss it. Yeah, put it on the agenda because it requires, you know, the Board of Selectmen make the certification, which means that the, uh, the Selectmen would vote to do this. So we can't take it up now because it's not really 48-hour business. We've got time to address it before town so meeting. So I know what to put on the agenda, that's all. Yep. And I have gone through this with, uh, I did ask town council about this and confirm that we, we do have that, uh, that ability. Okay. All righty. Patrick, you have anything? Nope. Okay. Um, on the article, so people understand also, the article for the school is not an article whether you're in favor of building a new school or not. The article that's going before town meeting is strictly an article in which it allows the town to borrow money to pay for the school. Uh, I'm sure people are gonna wanna sit there and discuss the merits of a new school or not, but that really is, it's already should have been taking place. There's been enough public hearings, et cetera. And I'm hoping people can stay to the subject on this particular case. I'm not telling people what to do or how to do, but the bottom line is you're only voting whether to allow the town to borrow money to go ahead, the ballot question on November 6th makes the decision whether the town goes ahead and builds in the school or not. So please understand that and keep your comments, if you can, to that one part of the, of the subject there, because that's all we're talking about at this time. Uh, the $1.4 million plus that we have for Tromont Nile is we rolled the dice uh, and we took a real risk because there was a chance we could have come up with remediation costs of 50, $100 million, which the, when you find you know, basically toxic materials in the soil, the costs are unbelievable. But we took a chance because we basically wanted to try and see if we could develop the property. And you can't develop the property unless you have a clean 21 year. You can't lease it, you can't rent it, you can't do anything. So we took a chance, it came up extremely low dollar-wise considering what we expected. So at the end of the day, the town of Wareham is now has to clean this up no matter what. So either we clean it up, you know, by using the CPA program, which allows us to do it, or we have to possibly use free cash for an emergency type thing, because the state's gonna come after us in, in one or two years and say, you have to clean this period, because now you've discovered it. So please understand this is something we don't have much choice. It's the least expensive piece that we probably end up with at the end of the day. People might see why'd you bought in the first place, because I'm personally tired of putting constant money into a facility there with no chance for possible return. And just the just last just piece, let me figure out on this also, um, is on the articles that we're going in and we're gonna discuss, uh, it just, everybody needs to sit there and discuss things logically. Uh, these are difficult articles we have. There's a lot of emotion out there. Um, and it has to do with the marijuana in particular, but just do it in a, in a nice, peaceful way. That's all I'm asking. It really has not been pleasant the last couple of weeks. And it makes me, you know, it bothers me a lot because I have people that I'm friendly with and it's almost like I'm losing friends over this and it's really not necessary. We're just trying to do at the end of the day what's best for the town. If you think it's better one way, that's fine. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong, but let's not destroy the town over one article. Thank you. All right, next up is appointments and reappointments. We have none. Then licenses, I have an application for a transfer of an existing year-round common vicular all-alcoholic beverage license and a pledge of license from the Fan Club, Inc., 2859 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, Mass., to uh, Glenn Justice Manager, to FC2, Inc., DBA Fan Club, Stephen Brescia? Uh, Brescia. Brescia. Mm -hmm. uh, manager, 2859 Cranberry Highway, uh, West Wareham, Mass., that's not West Wareham, by the way, uh, but okay, Wareham, Mass., under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws for the year 2018. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, John. Nice to see you. I thought I'd see a fan club t-shirt or something. Yeah. <laughs> Steve may have one on. I don't, actually. <laughs> Next time. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for hearing us. And basically, uh, what we're looking to do is obviously uh, transfer the liquor license um, and a pledge as well uh, as, as part of this. Uh, Steve's been uh, at the uh, fan club for over 20 26 years. years. 26 years. So uh, Steve is very familiar with the fan club. Um, he's been the assistant manager. 
And uh, now uh, Glenn is uh, releasing essentially the managerial duties uh, to Steve, uh, who will be there uh, full time uh, at the fan club. Any questions, Tony? Mary? Peter? I don't. Good luck. <laughs> Thank Patrick. you. Thank I you. have none, no. Going to be running the same programs and everything as usual? Yes. Yeah. Do a nice job there parking everything. It's really nice and clean. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's been a really a trouble-free organization for a long right. time. You know, <laughs> well, you've, done, you've done more than try. Yeah. All right. Okay, go ahead. I move we approve the application for transfer of an existing year-round common vehicular all-alcoholic beverage license, and uh, pledge the license for the Fan Club Inc. 2859 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, Mass. Glenn Justice Manager to FC2 Inc. DBA Fan Club Steve Brashia Manager 2859 Cranberry Highway Wareham under the provisions of Chapter 138 of Massachusetts General Laws for the year 2018. Second. Motion by Patrick, second by Tony. Any questions from the board? If not heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 5 0 0. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank we'll, you very much. We'll Thank process you. it out, ABCC, and we'll get back to you once, once we get the answer back. <laughs> <clears throat> Next up is an application for a name change of the Class Two application from Buzz's, Buzzards Way Garage, Inc., uh, 3067 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham. Okay, now this was a, it came before us once before. There was a problem in the name, um, and it's being corrected. Uh, at the time, we had a couple of questions. One was relevant to um, uh, how, many, uh, how many spaces he was using for cars. There was a bunch of other things. One was there were two businesses and he was leasing the other business at the time. But he does have a corporation, so it is still the principal business of the corporation. He is allowing the, um, the entity that he rented the garage to to do his service work. He's going to have a letter uh, of, of agreement for that. We're going to put in the file. He has agreed to uh, the parking spaces as such and also to the customer parking area. So we uh, apparently have resolved all of our issues and it's okay for us to ch make this change. Go ahead and make the motion. All right, I make a motion. We approve the license um, of Buzzards Way Garage, Inc., 3067 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, Massachusetts. Second. And that's for nine, at this time, nine. Nine vehicles on display, correct? Yes, and it's a nine vehicle license, so everybody knows at least at this particular time. Okay, motion by Patrick, second by Mary. Thank you, didn't see, couldn't hear. Um, I'm just gonna make a very quick comment. Uh, I was over and visited Henry, and the uh, setup there is quite well set, put together. They've got cars in back, we didn't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. There are cars with like no titles, waiting for titles, etc. So it was kind of confusing. They've got a basic oh, yeah. line separating stuff so there's no questions there's no issues and uh sorry for the confusion the first time around and uh i expect to see you back sometime after the first year to expand the number of cars all those in favor aye all those in favor again aye aye opposed that's the five zero zero good luck thank you henry My agenda's in there. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. <laughs> I knew it got shoveled in there somehow. There's all these papers. You know? All right. Next up is the Certificate of Appreciation. We did update from the School Building Committee. Come on down. You're the next contestants. Uh, I expect you... Sean, could you kill a bank of the lights? <laughs> She's got it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. good. You're going to come back sometime after the uh, town meeting and uh, do another presentation. We get close to the ballot question time. Are you talking to me? Mm. Oh, sorry. Joyce, yes. Yes. You let me know when you want to do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure, just want to say thank you for having us again. Um, I thought this would be a good time for us to come uh, update you again. Since the last time we were here, the school committee has met and, as you know, um, voted <laughs> to recommend the borrowing for 20 years at the 3.75% interest at level debt. Um, also, since then, we've been reaching out to the community in as many ways as we possibly can. Um, we've had community forums. Um, 
doing everything that we can to reach out to any groups that we can to spread the word uh, about the new school. And so Chad has a little update for you. All right, so we are on the cusp of our schematic design submission to the state. It is due to the state tomorrow. It'll be dropped off uh, by hand. They then are going to review that for three weeks and come back to us with comments sometime over the course of the next three weeks. We'll schedule something called a project scope and budget conference, and that's what really locks down uh, what the MSBA is going to contribute uh, to the project. So we'll walk through the process very quickly, an executive summary of what's happened over the past year and a half or so since uh, PMA has joined the team. Uh, so we've looked at a number of sites, 12 sites in total around the town. Uh, you evalu evaluate those sites for feasibility of constructing a building and whether or not that building can support the educational program that's been developed by the uh, district and educators and community. Uh, cost analysis is performed on a total of 17 different scenarios. So across the top there you see the four sites that were selected as finalists. Uh, Minot Forest, the existing DECA site, uh, this site here on Town Hall, and then 16 Minot Avenue, which is the parcel on the other side of Brandy Hill from the existing school. And then on the left side, you see all the enrollment scenarios that were evaluated. We looked at uh, constructing a new building for just the population of the Minot students. We looked at combining Minot and Decus. And then we also looked at a K through three scenario that would move fourth grade into the middle school. Uh, ultimately, the preferred alternative was new construction of the Minot Forest site. Uh, for grades K through four, pre-K through four. Uh, one thing that led us down to that road that I think the two finalists really were this site here on Town Hall and the Minot Forest site. Um, there were a lot of good feedback from the various committees involved, so uh, ultimately we actually ended up putting out to social media. And we had uh, 7,000 views on a poll that was created and we took the comments on that poll and we sort of grouped them into buckets and uh, flagged them as pros and cons for each of the sites. So you can see uh, pros and greens, cons and red for each of the sites. The Minot site has very few cons and uh, some of those cons like the single entrance and exit can be resolved with an effective schematic design solution. So ultimately that Minot Forest site was selected. With the Minot Forest site selected, we moved into building test layouts and fits. These are three samples. On the far left, that's where we started. This is the first new construction option that we had looked at as a two-story solution. Um, but it built on the back of the site, and on the back of the site, there's a large hill back there, but back when this option was on the table, the Minot Forest building was not yet vacated. Uh, by vacating the Minot Forest building, it allowed us to explore other options, such as the one that we see in the middle, which pushes the new building onto the footprint of the existing building. Oh, yeah. 82 cents, yeah. Uh, it reduces the site work cost. Site work is something that the MSBA caps. Uh, they cap it at 8% of the building costs. So by moving that building down, there's a tremendous savings to the district by reducing the overall site work cost. That middle picture is a three-story solution all the way around. Uh, ultimately, it was not the preferred solution, but one of many that were studied, just an example. And then on the far right, you have the addition renovation scenario. The MSBA requires us throughout this entire process to continue to carry a repair solution, addition renovation solution, in addition to the new construction options. We have to thoroughly study all three. They all go to the estimators, they all go through the exact same process, and they all need to be submitted to the state for the state's buy-in. Uh, so here's a, a cost, some cost data from February 13th. So the grouping on the left that you see here are just the Minot Forest solutions. Uh, the second grouping is Minot and Decus combined. And then on the right side, you see, uh, this is actually the repair solutions. The bottom half of the bar, the dark shaded, is what the anticipated district share, Wareham's cost would be. And then the top, lighter portion of the bar is what the MSBA contribution might be. Uh, so you can see this is actually the new construction at Minot solution right here. We had a forecast district share of just over $39 million. Uh, that's before the schematic design, and now that we're through schematic design, we'll see in a moment that uh, that number has held, which is great news. Uh, you'll also note on the repair, so this bottom half is the cost to repair Minot, and then the top half is the cost to repair Decus. Uh, these are the initial projections uh, that PMA and Mount Vernon Group put together. When the actual cost came in from the professional estimating firms, it was considerably higher. Uh, but in either solution, either scenario, the repair district share to repair existing buildings is, uh, is substantially higher than the cost to construct new with MSBA systems. Um, so the overall site plan as it currently sits, uh, the proposed building sits 
really right on top of the Mina Forest footprint. Uh, you're familiar with that site, you know that it's on a hill, the hill slopes down towards the street. There's about a 60 foot grade delta from the top of that hill onto the street, to the street. Uh, so the solution that we have here, this wing on the, that's actually a northern side of the site, is three stories and the rest of the building is two stories. Uh, so you'll see in the renderings in a moment, but having that three story wing allows us to, uh, to really tuck in that early education center for pre-K and kindergarten grades at the lowest level of the building and have really their own school within the larger school. Um, so vehicular capacity, 340 spaces. Uh, bus queuing is actually around the rear of the building and that's to mitigate any potential traffic impact on Minot Avenue. The idea is to pull all the buses and all the vehicles off the street and onto the site and if that can be performed effectively, uh, it will not impede Minot Avenue. So the traffic study still has another step to go through. There may be a flashing yellow light, there may be a full signal, um, but at the very least, the, uh, the queuing is vastly improved from what's currently there. What you're not seeing in this plan is the, uh, the soccer fields up behind the existing school as part of the project and program in the $90.4 million. Do get completely top dressed. Uh, they have a, a sub base put under them to help the drainage issues that currently exist up there and then irrigation system gets installed and there's also an access road that goes back there that will be fully accessible. So here are a couple views of the building. You can see on the left side here, this lower level is that uh, pre-K, kindergarten, early education center that we talked about. And then as you move up into the building, you move to the older grades. So on the first floor, or the middle floor, would be grades one and two, and then on the upper floor would be grades three and four. On the uh, first floor, so your main entrance sits sort of right here in between the two wings for the grades one through four students. The pre-K and K entrance would be down in the section here. So there's actually another separate uh, access control and a separate parent drop off and pick up area because the times do differ for those students. Uh, up on the top here, you can see some curtain wall. That is uh, an innovation hub. So one thing about this building is it is a very efficient use of square footage uh, in the MSBA's program, we need to make every single square foot count. They have something <laughs> called the net to gross ratio where they give you your net square footage, that's your program space, your core classroom space, your educational space, and your gross square footage is your corridors, your wall thicknesses, your mechanical shafts, your stairwells. Your net to gross ratio cannot exceed 1.5 or else the MSBA classifies that additional square footage as ineligible for reimbursement. Uh, as this plan currently sits, we believe that every single square foot should be reimbursed and that is how the submission will go to the state tomorrow, but of course subject to their review. Uh, so this is the view from the rear of the building. Uh, these windows here are uh, the cafeteria space and what the architect's intent with this building is to break up a very large structure into smaller, more man manageable portions, portions of building. The uh, materials that they have on the exterior of the building are time-tested, economical, durable, efficient. Uh, it's generally a traditional brick and block building using different colors and stratification materials, textures to give it that modern feel and, and really blend with the fabric of the community. Uh, another way that they're trying to break up the building is they've created these sort of different pods here. I mean, every section of the building has its own theme, so it doesn't feel like one very, very large, uh, big back box store type of structure, even though it is 160,000 square feet. Uh, this is another view of the, this is that pre-K and K wing, so down below, and then uh, there'll be play areas on each side of this wing, uh, three different play areas for all different grade levels. So back into construction costs, uh, right here, this, this is a live chart that's on the MSBA's website. And this looks back at construction trends over the past 10 years for the MSBA. Um, anything in orange or dark orange is something that's in construction or has an active bid waiting to go into construction. The, uh, the purplish and gray squares are stuff that are projects that are going through the design process. And then the plus signs are projects that are in the feasibility study, so we're one of those. Uh, you can see Wareham's blip over here. We're clocking in at $450 a square foot. And if we were to draw a line of best fit through all those dots, you can see that the trend right now is probably north of $520 a square foot. Uh, so what is currently in the design is very, very efficient, economical, durable. Uh, we believe that the cost is 
as low as it can be without sacrificing the durability of the building. We get into using materials that maybe don't have a 50 year lifespan, uh, something that certainly uh, does not align with the goals of the school building committee. We want this to be a building that lasts for decades and decades, uh, certainly at the very least 50 years as the state requires, hopefully much longer than that. Uh, so this is a, a view of where we are right now with project costs. So the, uh, on the left side here, you see the repair costs. These are now using the estimators numbers. So at this point, they've uh, analyzed the drawings and the needs of those buildings, and they've put their target on it. The bottom here is DECUS, and then the top is MINET. Uh, we pushed DECUS out five years because you can't tackle both the buildings at the same time. You need some place to put the students while the work is ongoing. So the idea is that MINET would happen first. MINET would have to be fully designed, bid out, work needs to be done, and then once that project's closed out, you'd sort of set your sights on DECUS. Uh, so the cost of repairing both of those buildings is $74 million. And uh, I do believe it's safe to say that that cost is an inevitable cost sometime over the next 50 years, which is the minimum lifespan of a new building. Um, because those buildings are too small, they're inefficient, they don't satisfy a modern educational program, the space size is incorrect, the sp uh, special education adjacencies are not proper. So the, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the Massachusetts School Building Authority would not contribute to a project that they don't feel is going to have a lifespan of at least 50 years and also does not satisfy the educational program which must be approved by DESIA and MSBA. So it's sort of a catch-22 on, on that end. Uh, in the middle here, we've been carrying the ad reno solution right through. Um, so those numbers are the latest on the ad reno. What it results in is a, is a slightly larger building. You're constrained by the existing footprint. Uh, you're driven down to a two-story structure. You have a large courtyard in the middle. Um, with that larger footprint, you have some additional costs, but because you're renovating the building, the MSBA gives you a reimbursement incentive, which is why the MSBA portion on that one's slightly higher than the new construction. Um, but generally speaking, the district share on the ad reno option and the new construction option, uh, it's a relatively small delta, especially when you factor in the possibility for unknowns and latent conditions uh, when dealing with a renovation project. Uh, on the far right side, you see the new construction option. And the important thing to note here, so our total project budget as being submitted tomorrow is 90.47 million. Uh, the forecast district share and I'd like to call this a worst case scenario, is that 39879. We have this amount here flagged as being subject to MSBA review. So the documents as submitted to the MSBA actually show a district share of $38.6 million. But we know that there's going to be a negotiation, so it's going to land somewhere between that number that gets submitted and we believe the upper limit would be the number that we're showing here. Uh, of course, we're gonna be pushing down towards the original submission number, that's the goal. Um, but we don't know until we get the MSBA's review comments back. Uh, so what that means for local tax impacts, um, working with the uh, assessor's office, he's calculating a property tax increase of 82 cents per thousand. On the average condo valued at 177,000, that translates to $145 annually. On the average single family home valued at 258,000, that translates to $211 annually. Uh, that is at a 20-year bond, which provided a $14 million savings over the 30-year bond option due to the interest rate savings. Uh, and the interest rate right now that we are holding is 3.75%, and that does reflect the recent uh, bump in the rates from the Feds in late September. So those are the latest and greatest numbers. Uh, also important to note, of course, that this is a debt exclusion. It's not a Proposition 2.5 override, so when the project is paid off, the debt uh, disappears from tax rolls. Uh, funds can only be used for that particular project. And uh, that 90.47 budget, once that's submitted to the state and hopefully approved by the Board of Directors, can never increase every subsequent submission to the state needs to be at or below that number or else they will kick it right back to us. And then uh, lastly, the budget does include nearly $4.2 million of contingency and the MSBA caps eligibility on contingency and it's a fairly low cap. So the bulk of that is 100% Wareham's share. So if the project can be completed and contingency can be turned back, which is always ultimately the goal, then the total district share at the end of the day is reduced by whatever contingency savings there is. And that's all I have, but happy to answer any questions that you might have.
Tony, do you have any questions? Mary? Yeah, I, again, uh, this is for everybody listening. This is a two-step process. Uh, the first is to authorize the borrowing of the entire amount at town meeting next Monday night. Once again, 7 p.m., town hall. Uh, not town hall, geez, I'll send people to the wrong place. Uh, <laughs> high school auditorium, uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, come join us, Madam Moderator, Town Council, Finance Committee, and a whole bunch of other people, maybe 500 plus, God only knows, uh, to vote on this question. This board expressed its opinion of the Warren article by v recommending unanimously to pass it. Uh, I know this. The school committee is, is also out doing work as well. And uh, I know Joyce is, is heading up an effort uh, sort of outside of officialdom to try to get the vote out. If you need any help, let me know. Okay, thank you very much. Just a quick thing. Um, there's two things that came up recently that state of Massachusetts has a new smart school uh, roads program, which I'm sure the school has been notified of. I don't know if we're a part of that yet. You've got to be in about six months in order to qualify for this program is starting very shortly. You'll be getting notification in November. Mm -hmm. All the schools, the municipality also has to join the program, the way this works. But if you need work as far as uh, lines, sidewalks, uh, different pieces as the, to get the kids in and out of the school on the outside, they provide a whole bunch of programs. I believe the grants are anywhere from up to as much as, I think, a half a million dollars or something. So if you are not in there, you need to get in there as soon as you can because it requires you to be in at least six months before you can apply. And this program will go for at least a year. It just came up uh, today when I was at uh, Taunton for Serpent. The state was there and explained the project. It was I thought it fit really well with us going forward. The other piece is you need to look, and I mentioned to your partner, but very closely with Serpent uh, for the bike path, which has been approved for Miami Dev, yep. because it goes down the road there and it's going to affect your entranceway, mm -hmm. et cetera. And also the, the Smart Street Program, it provides for bike path as well for the schools, for kids getting to school and everything. Mm -hmm. So it might actually make more additions to what the program is available. Yep. So yep. if you can, please look into both of those things. Absolutely. Both thank on you. our radar and we'll push you further. So thank you for your time. Thank you. I just wanted to note that Chad, um, his presentation did address two of the biggest questions that we have found that have been coming up. That is the total cost of the project cannot exceed the amount that's being submitted and that it is a debt exclusion. So I just want to thank Chad for including that and just point out that, you know, that those again are the, the questions that are coming up. Misinformation is our biggest enemy and that's what we're out. Happens to all of us. Yes. Yep. yes. All right, so uh, thank you for all your work. You guys are doing a great job. All right, so let me explain uh, one thing. I'm sitting with a gentleman over the weekend, uh, very, uh, a guy who's in the know, really, to be honest with you. And we're sitting at his house, and we're just sitting outside, uh, outside one of his doors, and uh, we're talking and stuff, and he says to me, you know, that school's going to cost me $850 more a year. And I said, really? Well, what's your assessment? He knew right away what his assessment was. He gives it to me. I plug it in. It's $400. All right? So this is the kind of thing, you see. He's running around already with a number in his head that's not even a real number. Now, I noticed that you put a calculator up on the website. The calculator, Great. and it's also been shared on the town website, which, thank you. Which is just awesome. And uh, people can go there, put their assessed value, get your real estate bill, put your assessed value in there, and that'll tell you exactly what your increase is. Legitimately, your increase, not one you made up, not one you guessed at, the exact amount, and that way you can say, okay, this is what it's going to cost me. And at least you can make a decision that's informed and not necessarily uninformed, which we like to have. And on that decisions. calculator page, there's also a link to the assessor's page, so you can get your correct current assessment. There you go. You can also get your current assessment, so that works out really well. Mm -hmm. But I was just dumbfounded by the fact that he's a guy in, his, in the know, really, like, uh, you know, involved in town politics and government and everything else, and he comes and throws this number out at me, and I'm like... Well, you know, something doesn't sound right. I know you have a relatively expensive house, but it doesn't sound right. So I give me your assessment. He tells it. I put in the thing, put my phone, do the calculation. I said, you know, how about 400? 
Really? He says, yeah. He said, only 400 It was like $408 or something like that. And he said, oh, that's terrific. He says, that's much better. I said, yeah. I says, it would be if I thought I was going to pay eight fifty. <laughs> so anyway, get the right information. It's always a good thing to have. And so, thank you for your work. Uh, I'm sorry I walked in late because I was actually at one of those focus group meetings. You did, and, and we're going to fine you for that. <laughs> well, I heard some discussion about the, the Warren article having to do with the school, so I was just curious. Can I ask what that was about? The Warren article? It wasn't discussion. It was just the explanation of uh, we're only voting on the borrowing. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Because there's confusion. I'm sure the moderator is going to have to make a decision somewhere down the line as people keep asking questions about the school or either for or against, because that's not what we're voting on. Right. It's all November 6th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a simple problem. And you know, and, and frankly, from experience, from stuff we've done in the past, we know that people tend to go to town meeting and say, yeah, okay, let's, let's send it to the ballot and let people make a decision. So I think that'll probably be fine, but we'll, we'll have to uh, deal with some, <coughs> of, some of the questions and some of the stuff, at least right up front. Then after that, you got a lot of work to do. Yeah, Correct. certainly do. Yes. Lots We're of work. On it. Okay. okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, next is to vote on the state election warrant, and I've given that Peter to speed read because it's lengthy. <laughs> All right, we got four ballot questions, so I got to blow through this. <laughs> okay, let me wind up here. <clears throat> huh? Go for it. All right, my motion is Commonwealth of Massachusetts, William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, from the Shire Town to the constables of the town of Wareham, greetings in the name of the Commonwealth. You are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town of Wareham who are qualified to vote in primaries to vote at Precinct 1, Wareham Town Hall, 54 Marion Road, Precinct 2, Ethel Hammond School, 13 Highland Ave. Precinct 3, Minor Forest School, 63 Minor Ave. Precinct 4, Deacon School, 760 Main Street. Precinct 5, Pediza School, 760 Main Street. Precinct 6, Minor Forest School, 63 Minor Ave. On Tuesday, the 6th day of November 2018, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose, to cast their votes in the state primaries for the candidates of political parties for the following office, Senator in Con Congress for this Commonwealth, Governor for this Commonwealth, Lieutenant Governor for this Commonwealth, Attorney General for this Commonwealth, Secretary of State for this Commonwealth, Treasurer for this Commonwealth, Auditor for this Commonwealth, Representative of Congress, 9th District, Counselor, 1st District, Senator in General Court, 1st Plymouth and Bristol District, Representative in General Court, 2nd Plymouth District, District Attorney, Plymouth District, so Clerk of Courts, Plymouth County, Register of Deeds, Plymouth District, County Commissioner, Plymouth County, Regional School Committee, Bourne, Upper Cape, Regional School Committee, Falmouth, Upper Cape, Regional School Committee, Sandwich, Upper Cape, Regional School Committee, Wareham, Upper Cape. Question one. These are the ballot questions. Law proposed by initiative, initiative petition. Do you approve of a law summarized below in which no vote was taken by the House or the House of Representatives before May 2nd, 2018? Summary, this proposed law would limit how many patients could be assigned to each registered nurse in Massachusetts hospitals and certain other health care facilities. The maximum number of patients per registered nurse would, be, would vary by type of unit and level of care as follows. In units with step-down intermediate care patients, three patients per nurse. In units with post-anesthesia care or operating room patients, one patient under anesthesia per nurse. Two patients post-anesthesia per nurse. In the emergency services department, one critical or intensive care patient per nurse or two if the nurse has assessed each patient's condition is stable. Two urgent non-stable patients per nurse, three urgent stable patients per nurse, or five non-urgent stable patients per nurse. In units with maternity patients, A, active labor patients, one patient per nurse, B, during birth and for up to two hours immediately postpartum, one mother per nurse and one baby per nurse. C, when the condition of the mother and baby are determined to be stable, one mother and her baby or babies per nurse. D, postpartum, six patients per nurse. E, immediate, post, immediate care or continuing care babies, two babies per nurse. F, well babies, six babies per nurse. In units with pediatric, medical, surgical, telemetry, or observational outpatient treatment patients or any other unit, four patients per nurse. And in units with psychiatric or rehabilitation patients, five patients per nurse. The proposed law would require a covered facility to comply with the patient lim assignment limits without reducing its level of nursing, service, maintenance, clerical, professional, and other staff. The proposed law would also require every covered facility to develop a written patient acuity tool for each unit to evaluate the condition of each patient. This tool would be used by nurses in deciding whether patient limits should be lower than the limits of the proposed law at any given time. The proposed law would not override any contract in effect on January 1, 2019 that set higher patient limits. The proposed law's limits would take effect after any such contract expired. The State Health Policy Commission would be required to promulgate regulations to implement the proposed law. The Commission could conduct 
inspections to ensure compliance with the law. Any facility receiving written notice from the Commission of a complaint of a, uh, or a violation would be required to submit a written compliance plan to the Commission. The Commission could report violations to the State Attorney General who could file suit to obtain a civil penalty of up to 20,000, 25,000 rather, per violation, as well as up to 25,000 for each day of violation and continued after the Commission notified the covered facility of the violation. The Health Policy Commission would be required to establish a toll-free number for complaints and a website where complaints, compliance plans, and violations would appear. The proposed law would prohibit discipline or retaliation against any employee for complying with the patient assignment limits of the law. The proposed law would require every color facility to post within each pa unit, patient room, and waiting area a notice explaining the patient limits and how to report violations. Each day of facilities non-compliance with the posting requirement would be punishable by a civil penalty between $250 and $2,500. The proposed law's requirements would be suspended during a state or nationally declared public health emergency. The proposed law states that if any of its parts were declared invalid, the other parts would stay in effect. The proposed law would take effect on January 1, 2019. A yes vote would limit the number of patients that could be assigned to one registered nurse in hospitals and certain other health care facilities. A no vote would make no change in current laws relative to patient to nurse limits. What my whistle here? I'm not even that amped up. Question two, law proposed by initiative petition. Do you approve of a law summarized below on which no vote was taken by the Senator of the House of Representatives before May 2nd, 2018? Summary. This proposed law would create a Citizens Commission to consider and recommend potential amendments to the United States Constitution to establish that corporations do not have the same constitutional rights as human beings and that campaign contributions and expenditures may be regulated. Any resident of Massachusetts who is a United States citizen would be able to apply for appointment to the 15-member commission, and members would serve without compensation. The governor, secretary of the Commonwealth, state attorney general, speaker of the House of, Rep of State House of Representatives, and the president of the state senate would each appoint three members of the commission, and in making these appointments would seek to ensure that the commission reflects a range of geographic, political, and demographic backgrounds. The commission would be required to research and take testimony and then issue a report regarding one, the impact of political spending in Massachusetts. Two, any limitations on the state's ability to regulate corporations and other entities in light of Supreme Court decisions that allow corporations to assert certain constitutional rights. Three, recommendations for constitutional amendments. Four, an analysis of constitutional amendments introduced to Congress. And five, recommendations for advancing proposed amendments to the United States Constitution. The Commission would be subject to the State Open Meeting Law and Public Records Law. The Commission's first report would be due December 31st, 2019, and the Secretary of the Commonwealth would be required to deliver the Commission's report to the State Legislature, the United States Congress, and the President of the United States. The proposed law states that if any of its parts were declared invalid, the other parts would stay in effect. The proposed law would take effect on January 1st, 2019. A yes vote would create a Citizens Commission to advance an amendment to the United States Constitution to limit the influence of money in elections and establish that corporations do not have the same rights as human beings. A no vote would not create this commission. Question three, referendum, referendum on an existing law. Do you approve of a law summarized below, which was approved by the House of Representatives and the Senate on or before, I'm assuming on or before July 7th, 2016. Summary, this law adds gender identity to the list of prohibited grounds for discrimination in places of public accommodation, resort, or amusement. Such grounds also include race, color, religious creed, national origin, sex, disability, and ancestry. A quote, place of a public accommodation, resort, or amusement, unquote, is defined in existing law as any place that is open to and accepts or solicits the patronage of the general public, such as stores, hotels, stores, restaurants, theaters, sports facilities, and hospitals. Quote, gender identity, unquote, is defined by, as a person's sincerely held gender-related identity, appearance, or behavior, whether or not it is different from that traditionally associated with the person's physiology or assigned sex at birth. This law prevents discrimination based on gender identity and a person's admission to or treatment in any place of public accommodation. The law requires any such place that has separate areas for males and females, such as restrooms, to allow access to and full use of those areas consistent with a person's gender identity. Um, I think there's a word missing here. I, I, I think it's supposed to read, the law also prohibits the owner or manager of a place of public accommodation from using advertising or signage that discriminates on the basis of identity. This law directs the state commission against discrimination to adopt rules or policies and make recommendations to carry out this law. The law also directs the state attorney general to issue regulations or guidance on referring for legal action any person who asserts gender identity for an improper purpose. 
The provisions of this law governing access to places of public accommodation are effective as of October 1st, 2016. The remaining provisions are effective as of July 8th, 2016. A yes vote would keep in place the current law which prohibits discrimination on the basis of gender identity in places of a public accommodation. A no vote would repeal this provision of the public accommodation law. Finally, question four, that's our local one. Shall the town of Wareham be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bonds issued in order to construct a new pre-K through fourth grade elementary school on the existing mine at Forest School site, including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto? Hereof fail not and make return of this warrant with your doings thereon at the time and place of said voting, given under our hands the 16th day of October 2018. Alan H. Slavin, Chairman, Patrick G. Tropiano, Clerk, Peter W. Teitelbaum, Anthony Rascaziotti, Jr., Mary Bruce Selectman of the Town of Wareham. Second. Any questions for the board? All in favor? Aye. All Okay, then we have to sign this. All right, next up is uh, discussion of town meeting articles. We don't have anything to discuss really because no, town administrator is not here. Unfortunately, we'll be uh, Monday night at six o'clock at the cafeteria, probably just for public information, public probably ahead of time. Uh, Jared from the DOR was in town yesterday working all day with uh, Judy. We should have our free cash number uh, Thursday at the latest Friday, but most likely Thursday. So we're in pretty good shape. We have the numbers so that we can actually fill in the numbers that we need to have for those articles that are using free cash. Yep. And next up, 48-hour business. Tony? Mary? I don't have any. Dita? None. Patrick? No. Same for me. Love. Town Administrator's report, obviously not. Liaison reports. Unless he could telepath and give it to us. Who? Oh. <laughs> Unless we can. We're <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not going there. Tony, right. you have anything? <laughs> Mary. Nope. What else? I, I actually have a funny anecdote to pass on. I was talking with Derek this morning, and uh, he was dropping off his uh, youngest daughter at daycare, and he said, uh, I got to go. Uh, we're almost at Maggie's daycare. Well, he called me back and told me she was having a fit because she doesn't like it called daycare. She wants to be a big girl and go to school. Yeah. So. Oh, Alan, actually, it's not really a liaison thing, but I did meet with the clergy last week and for the signs, so they're all aware, don't put the signs out, just okay. something that you brought up last week. Yeah, the only reason why I bring it up is we probably, if you go in front of the Toby Homestead right now, there's got to be eight signs out there. There's two for the walk-in clinic, which I don't know if they're a non-profit or whatever. It really doesn't matter. It's, just, it, it's what happens that gets so far out of hand, so we're just trying to control it so we know what's okay and what's not. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Patrick. Okay, so I met with the uh, uh, some uh, some folks from the hospital and from the uh, opioid uh, group from the uh, church at the Church of the Good Shepherd. Uh, and interesting enough, you know, one of the reasons was is because uh, you know it's very difficult to get everybody on the same page and so on in order to get some things done. And and the group is really good at beds and things of that nature. Do you need? Yes, I do. Oh, do I? Oh, yes, the state election warrant. Oh, yeah. Okay, without, sorry. Without three of us, there's so, no election. So anyway, so we had this, this long uh, meeting, probably a couple hours here, and uh, we managed to get everybody on the same page. Uh, the hospital was very, very uh, receptive to setting up a mutual program that they can both work together in this opioid crisis. We did discuss there was um, 100, I'll tell you what it is, 100, I believe 159 was the number of uh, since year to date of, of uh, opioid overdoses. Uh, I don't have the actual uh, fatality number, but it's considerable, I can tell you that, okay? Uh, so it's a real serious crisis, and uh, these folks are doing amazing thing over there at this church. Everybody should be very proud of this group. I mean, they have put together a heck of an organization in a short time, they are finding the beds that nobody else can find. They're getting people into treatment and programs. And the hospital wants to be on board. As a matter of fact, there's a brand new program that they just they had instituted at St. Luke's. And they want to institute it here with this organization, uh, which is a terrific program uh, of a mutual, uh, a, a mutual um, cooperation between the group and the hospital. And there's a way that they, they let people know what's going on without violating the HIPAA and the whole nine yards. 
So it's really going to be good, and uh, it'll really help them kind of uh, maybe get a little more, um, you know, a little more. I mean, you know, and look, you know, this is a, an obviously so many people. It's, uh, you know, if they can st even intervene in, you know, one or five or ten or whatever it is, and the end result, it's, it's well worth whatever time they invest. Uh, you know, it's amazing. I mean, this is a volunteer group, and they're just doing some amazing work, and we really need to be proud of what they're doing over there at uh, Church of Good Shepherd and the organization that they put together. And I don't know if you noticed, but the signs down on the corner there uh, by oh, the yeah. bump out, you notice they got two signs there? Right. Well, we gave him permission to do that the week of uh, the, the thing. So it's this week. Obviously, the signs are there right now. So it's this week that they're having the meeting. And I believe it's Thursday, right? I think it's Thursday. I think so. Yeah. And it, uh, it starts at 5 and it runs through 9. And they have all the people there. And I guess at some point, the hospital is going to supply them. One of the things in order to get into a bed sometimes requires a medical evaluation first so that you can get them into one of these programs. So the hospital is gonna to try to work out getting the, like you'd have somebody come, they can get them a quick medical evaluation, you know, as far as the medical that they're stable, and then get them off right away into a facility uh, to get them up and running, you know. So it's, it's a terrific thing and I'm glad it's going on. And everybody should be happy. All right, next up is uh, that I have to say is I noticed that the, uh, the two uh, women that came in earlier and had their issues with the bathhouse, and I know they have a disagreement in what we believe our grounds are and what theirs are, and there's not much we can say about that. But they did have some questions, and I would like to get the answers to their question, but I want to make note that they didn't put it in the book, so we're not going to be able to do that. So if they come in again, we, we, there's no way for us to have had the answers for them or to have gotten the answers, just so you noticed. I don't know if you noticed. They didn't write a thing in the book. They were happy not to do that, apparently. The answers are already out there on the uh, show I did with WCTV and on set. Well, but, you know, the book is there, and we do get the answers to that. I mean, Alan is darn good at making sure that people get the answers that they write in that book. And if you don't write it in the book, we can't answer it, and unfortunately, it never got written down. All right, other than that, I guess I, I, I've talked enough. <laughs> Your turn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'd I'll still be do. here. Let me, yeah, oh, that. no. You're the, you're the kingpin of that, buddy. <laughs> I don't have too much tonight. Um, oh, gee. Yeah, it's <laughs> unusual. Um, we had, um, the buzz, it was funny because the Buzz's Bay Coalition did a uh, grand opening of a facility in Marion that the town of Marion reached out to them to take over a building which is about one block past uh, Front Street as you're heading west. Uh, I think there was some issue of whoever was going to go into the building. They, the town wanted something else. So they basically gave them the building virtually with a grant. And I think everybody who has the ability and the time should go over there. It's the old hardware store right on the corner of Route 6. And I don't know the name of the street there. But it's exactly one street past Front Street, heading west <coughs> on the left-hand side. Um, the firm that built this particular facility for the coalition uh, is the same one that's doing the bathhouse. If you have the opportunity, go take a look at it and see what it is. You're going to be extremely surprised at what it is and how it's done with the materials as far as the landscaping and the permeable, so permeable materials for, where they have you know, plenty for grass and everything else. And the inside is just beautifully done in wood. And this is what you're going to end up with a bathhouse down in Onset. Uh, and it's pretty spectacular for what they can do. I give them credit. They go out and they raise the money. They find help. And they do something that's really done to an exceptionally high standard and a high level. So as I said, I'm hoping everybody uh, has a chance to go take a look so they don't consider that the coalition is going to be doing something wrong. And just as a quick answer that was given before is the town of Wareham owns the property. Uh, just like we own the property for WCTV, they buy the property, it comes back to the town at the end if they leave. And the same thing here, the bathhouse reverts back to the town of Wareham when, when the coalition leaves. So uh, nobody's doing anything that's underhanded or anything else. It's kind of discouraging when you hear that. That's all I have for tonight. Okay, next up is approval of set of minutes from September the 18th, 2018. Everybody was here except for Alan. And uh, Peter, you were uh, chairman pro tem, so you'll have to sign these. I move we approve these minutes.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain one, four zero one. Okay, next up is, uh, hey, he took me seriously. He what do you know? Bill, huh? we, he got, yeah, I told you, I said last week he owed me one. All right, I have a bill for the law office of Richard Bowen for professional services through 10 2018. Motion by Patrick. Second. Second by Tom. Any questions? None heard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Yeah, Five. we've been working him like a rented mule lately, so. Yeah, 500. Zero, zero. <laughs> he's, he's, he's been earning it. Motion right. to adjourn. That's it. Motion by Alan, second by Tony. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero zero. Good night, Wareham. Good night. Sleep Thank tight. Thank you.